So welcome. My name is Lavina Archers, if you don't know me. The human design system is called the science of differentiation because it allows you to contemplate what makes you you and see clearly, graphically, in a map, a map to you of your genetic potential. See what is conditioning and not reliable or consistent inside of your head about yourself, your mind's process. So one of the things that it does that I absolutely love so much is that it helps us understand what we can trust in this life. It helps you make decisions that you can trust. So if you're new to design, again, welcome, you're in the right place. Human design helps you see your genetic code. It opens the door to the true self, the vital aliveness that is your inherent birthright. The, uh, wisdom potentials and the true utter bliss and joy of living this life as you were designed to live. It doesn't mean that it's always going to be easy, but what it does mean is that you're going to live the life that you were born for. And there's nothing more fulfilling, more satisfying, more successful than feeling that joy of aliveness and vitality and passion move through you in a satisfying or peaceful way, whatever it is that you're primarily here for. So we're going to go over a little bit of the types in a, in a bit. I'll come back to that to help you with strategy and honoring your personal uh, auric type, your vehicle. This body is built around an aura. So that genetic code was imprinted when you were born and three months before you were born. This map is very different than everything that you've seen under the sun from before human design was born until now. This is brand new on the planet. This system was given to Ra and he translated it into words and established it out into the world of form so that we could experiment with it. So what you're looking at is a body graph on the right hand side, this imprint in black. This is your conscious personality. It is the passenger or the witness of this life. The actual life itself, the vehicle, the body that you live in is the imprint on the left hand side. So normal astrology and anything else that's based on the birth data has one calculation in human design we have two because we recognize that we are a binary consciousness there is the witness or the observer who is the personality witnessing this life there is the body which is the life the body being the observed and then there is the process of what happens when we match a passenger with a vehicle and we cruise along in our life and our trajectory and our path in this life and we get to witness the magic of that. That is the process of observing. So observer, observed, and observing or witnessing this life and this experiencing this life. That's your body craft. That's the magic of the body craft. So a Living Your Design teacher, hi, that's me, is a guide to awakenness. Living Your Design is a trip, it's a great trip. Because your responsibility, our responsibility, is that we're here to help wake people up. We're not gonna train you as a professional in this course. This course, Living Design, is what it used to be called, now it's Living Your Design. Living Your Design is the only spiritual course you'll find in human design. So if you're ready to wake up, you're in the right place because there is nothing like it on the planet that helps you to maximize your full potential by waking you up to the reality of what this life is for you in this form, to clear the cobwebs from the mind, to clear the shadows from the mind so that you are not locked into being a slave to your internal dialogue about oneself. That is the conditioned mind. So in this, course or experience it's really not a course it's, it's an awakening experience what we want to do is help you make mind your servant because that's what it's here for it is fantastic for measuring and comparing and being an outer authority for others what does outer authority mean in human design we have type strategy authority that's your experiment your personal authority for most people, it's called an inner authority. It's literally a place within the body that holds the decision-making power. So when you learn what to trust in this life, that you can trust it, how it shows up, how it speaks to you when it's not being obeyed, 
you can see how important it is to experiment with your strategy. Strategy being the mechanism for a type learning how to make a decision that is right, when to make a decision that is right for them. So outer authority then, all of us can be an outer authority for another person. We can talk to that other person. If we're really having a great conversation, we can always share what we see if that person asks, recognizes and invites for the projector, asks for the generator, informs for the manifester. We can always share our perspective, our communion of unique seeing with another person. That's outer authority. That's what our mind is here for. Here's another quote from Ra. Ra says, mind isn't for turning off. It's for aligning. It's for correcting it. We have great minds. They're beautiful things. But the mind is not there to be your enemy for life. It isn't. It's here to serve. It's here to express you. It's here to witness and share what it's like to be in this vehicle with other people. So what happens in human design, human design is a form knowledge. It helps us embody our form. It helps us get to the groundwork, the basis, the fundamental reality of what this life is. What you're living most of the time, if you're thinking inside of your head about yourself, you're living an illusion. It's not real, it's conditioning. And what this coursework or this experience does when you move through living your design, it shows you, it, it maps out for you the conditioned mindset that loops over and over again inside of your head about yourself that forces you to think that you have to think that forces you to think that you have to do something about what you think, when in fact, every word inside your head about yourself is distorted. Everything, you have to question every thought. And when we go through this experience, you're going to learn why. You're going to see why. You're going to experience and feel why. Human design in and of itself um, is the science of differentiation. I added this piece about the science of light first because it goes prettily along with this image. Um, I believe it was Human Design Bulgaria that uh, I found this image with. And I have the little images for Rahu and Ketu. They are the North and South node. So what happens with human design is that it sheds light on our experience of this life and helps illuminate the Maya. It casts shadows deeper because it's outlining them for you so that you can see them. Just like when you have a flashlight in a dark room and you shine that spotlight on something and now there's a clear, distinct shadow, it helps you see your shadows. So if you take a look at the body graph, anywhere that you have an undefined center, an undefined function of your human uniqueness in this life, there are activations or not inside of those undefined functions. So the open or undefined functions have activations that are coming from planetary imprints. These are your genetic potential in wisdom of interacting with life and receiving information from the outside that you're now digesting and learning about and experiencing and expressing as wisdom potential. So to make it more simple, these are your wisdom centers. They are also the home of your shadows or your not self as we like to call it in human design. Ra would be very dramatic with his languaging to shock people and initiate them and to wake them up. So one of the things I recognize is that not self, when we talk about not self, a lot of times people just come to us, oh, that's my not self, that's so bad, there's something wrong there. It's not, there's nothing wrong with you. In fact, these activations, you can't erase the gate or the line, and this is a part of your imprint, wherever that imprint happens to be. And that it's the simple thing of it is, your conditioned mind is built on all this openness, and your conditioned mind thinks like this all the time. And that's what we can't trust. That's what's distorted. That's the illusion that you live eternally inside the head about the self because it never goes away. So it's not self to make a decision based on any of the undefined functions 
but it's still an aspect of you as an example. This is my driving force, my moon, interdependence. Gate 61 is about the mysteries, the inner truth. And in order for me to establish inner truth with another person, there's an interdependence. There's a collaboration, a, a coalescing of energies that come together. And now something new comes to the forefront because this is part of where I find and how I find inspiration. But if I'm looking to make a personal decision about myself based on, I need to know the answers and I have to find the truth. And let me answer that question for you. And you haven't asked me, that's a not self behavior. So when we go through this experience, should you choose to continue on the journey, we're going to break down your chart and look at every single center, this function, these vortexes of energy to help you understand what your conditioned mind is built upon and what you can actually trust in this life, which is the defined areas of your body graph. And that's why human design is so simple. It's such a deep, profound knowledge, but everything that's really, really effective and important is right there on the surface for you to experiment with. You do not have to learn human design in order to live it. You just need to know how your body graphs works. So again, like I mentioned, human design is a form knowledge. It helps us understand our forms in this life. When you take a look at this body graph, this is the full ray of mandala wheel. What we've done in this illustration is showed you, um, colored in for you, the channels by type. So there are four types in this body of knowledge, the auric frequencies of these humans. Within those types, there are billions of variations. There's so many variations, but it, it comes back down to the simple of the strategy for accessing the uniqueness that is there in your imprinting. So the colors, just to give you a little overview here, this sacral center right here, this red square in the bottom, this is our only center that creates a type of human being. So if you see the center defined in someone's body graph, that person is a generator. They might be a manifesting generator, they might be an emotional generator, they might be a splenic generator, they might be an individual generator. There's all different kinds of generators. Basically, we separate them into two categories. Generators, pure generators with no motor to the throat, or a generator that has manifesting capacity. So there's a manifesting generator, or there's a pure generator. They're both generators. Their type needs to wait for a response to come from within them to what life has to offer rather than initiating from mind. That is the core of these red channels right here is that they absolutely must in order to operate in alignment because this is a swirling vortex that sucks, it pulls energy in for the generator to respond to. If you're not trying to push the river and initiate out, if you're waiting for things to come to you and you respond, you're using your body's innate intelligence of knowing what you have energy for. That's for you, for the generators or generators with manifesting potential, manifesting generator, the pure manifesting generator channel is the 3420. So that's our core of what is there for a sacral being. Now there are three blue channels right here. Those are direct manifestation channels because these are also energy that is connected up to our throat center, which is our home for communication, action, manifestation, and metamorphosis. So when you have somebody who has one of these channels directly, that is a either an ego manifestor or an emotional manifestor. And these as a type, need to inform before they act, before they can make their impact. If they keep other people informed, it helps reduce the resistance that is there. Resistance for the sacral being happens to be a process of deep frustration. Resistance for the manifester happens to be a process of deep anger. They're very different frequencies. So now let's say, in your body graph, you have aspects. All of us do have different aspects, and maybe you have aspects of that. You start to experience anger. Hi, 
I start to experience anger. I know I've been attempting to use my willpower to manifest something out of alignment. Primarily what, what the um, experience of resistance though is going to come up like for the consistency in the body graph, it's going to come from the defined functions and channels. And as you can see here, I'm a projector. And so the projector will experience deep bitterness when out of alignment, maybe even resentment when out of alignment. All of these black channels within this body graph are projected. The moment you have though, a generator channel that trumps the projected channels because that creates that type. So you'll have somebody who may have some projected channels, but they will have aspects of deep frustration that is a signpost coming from the definition that you are off track. You know when you're driving down the highway and there's bumps on the side of the road, little bumps on the side of the road that tell you you're going off track, or there's little bumps in the middle of the road, those little light things that um, make it so that it divides the road into two different sections so that we can stay safely on our lane or in our lane. Frustration is a bump on the side of the road. Bitterness is a bump on the side of the road. Anger is a bump on the side of the road. These types have signposts that help us know whether or not we're aligned. So think to yourself, if you would like to share, please feel free. If you are a generator, are you mostly on the side of satisfaction and doing what you love, loving what you do, everything that you do is fulfilling in this life, so you're satisfied with how you use your energy? Or are you uh, out of alignment and always frustrated? So are you satisfied with this life? Please feel free to let me know. Do you feel satisfied? Do you feel happy with how you use your energy? Because one of the things that happens if you're in the beginning of this knowledge and you haven't experimented the type strategy authority, maybe you're older, I'm 43, <laughs> I'm 42. No, I can't remember how old I am. I don't even know, it's somewhere around there. Anyway, 43. The, because I'm an adult, basically, we're adults around Uranus opposition, mine comes in at 44. When you're an adult, you have all these decades of conditioning and you can't get rid of that. It's part of your lifetime and your learning and your wisdom potential. But when you get to the adult phase, you have all this crystallized conditioning that locks you into habits and patterns, rituals, routines of trying to avoid pain or suffering in the openness where you've been making your decisions all your life. So if you're walking around as a generator with a deep sense of frustration, it's constant, it's always there, it's normal, that is a signpost that you're off track. And there's no problem with that. It's a great thing. It's a blessing to have a signpost and a recognition of the anger or the bitterness or the frustration is a gift because it, it's a sign on the side of the road that says, hey, Time to stop, time to wait, time to gather yourself, breathe into where you are in this moment and what's physically present in your reality to respond to if you're a generator, what's physically asking, recognizing and inviting out of you some energy to do something as a projector. What in this world is moving you to action? If you're a manifester, it is your ego willpower, or it is your solar plexus emotion, or if you're a manifester through projected channels, perhaps it is your adrenalized function of drive and stamina that is creating some force within you that's moving you to action. That is the only type that can actually get something started because they are manifestors from within. That is their home of their own authority is to make an impact. So now there's one type I haven't mentioned on this uh, body graph image because we're, we're highlighting all of the types as a channel. Let's imagine none of those types, those channels are colored in. They're all blank. They're all open like this. If it's open like this, this is a reflective channel. And when we have a reflected channel, this is somebody, there's no definition in the body graph, there's no colored in centers, 
They're about 1% of the population, thereabouts. They have a different frequency. They have a different behavior and established role within our community. The reflector channels hold a deep sense of disappointment or they hold this immense amount of surprise when we don't have any body graph channels completely activated, creating a solar type of being. This, these are our solar types, our manifestors, generators, and projectors. The reflectors are very unique and special and different, and if you continue the journey, we'll talk more about them. So as a guide in this process of awakening, this journey with you, I've been doing this for four years now, I learn from you by walking alongside you in this deconditioning journey. Deconditioning doesn't ever end. You want to know why? Because we're being conditioned every moment of every day. So you come into this human design experience, you might learn that did the, the first seven years, there's this process of deconditioning. Well, in the next seven years, it's a continual process of deconditioning because it's like peeling back the layers of an onion because you're always getting conditioned. Conditioning is not bad. It's not, it's not wrong. It is part of our learning of the wisdom potential that is there in the undefined function. So everywhere, whether somebody is walking by you or the transit is bringing in that whole channel. So I'm gonna go back to get me a, uh, since I already showed you this, the transit report. Here's my body graphs in, this, in the uh, software portion. I just go to just now right there. So here's what's happening today. Are you noticing that you're more about the material world? Are you noticing that you're learning about education and providing for the tribe? Are you noticing that there's a lot of desire to own things? That's part of what this imprint of the transit is doing to us right now because it's about money, channel of materialism. So every moment of every day we're being conditioned, not just from the current transits of the planets that are there, not just from the people that you live with that you just happen to walk by in the store, even if you live alone, you're being conditioned every time you come into someone else's aura. But there's also a thing called a life cycles. Um, in BG5, we call it milestones. BG5 is the career and business aspect of the human design system. So these milestones of your life, 30 years, your Uranus opposition, which is around 40 years, your Chiron return, 50 years. These milestones also show us elements of conditioning. The solar return shows us elements of this year's conditioning. So you can't escape it and it's not a bad thing. It helps us to learn about our unique potential because conditioning is homogenization, it's sameness. It's what is out there in the world, whereas what's inside of us that is defined is what is absolutely and utterly unique to us. This absolute utter uniqueness that is you is a very narrow, fixed line. It's highly specialized, it's correctly limited because this is the way that you're designed to be you. So in this course or experience, should you continue the journey, we're going to go into the nine centers so that you can comprehend what is there in your body graph. What is reliable if it's colored in, what is open and perhaps distorted or shadow potential, as well as the gift, the wisdom potential that is there. So on this slide, if you decide to um, continue the journey, you will get a slide, um, download this PDF so that you have this as a resource. And so we're gonna go into the head center, the ajna, the throat, the G, the ego or heart, the solar plexus, the sacral, the splenic center and the root center. So that what you can learn about your drive and stamina, your energy resource, your emotional intelligence, your survival instincts, your individual willpower for yourself and for others, your identity, your love and direction, your communication and action, correct and aligned manifestation or metamorphosis, your conceptualization process of your internal mind and how it is an outer authority for other people and the inspiration that is there, the mental pressure to figure out 
um, answers and rationalizations and realizations about how to digest this life's process, our self-reflected consciousness of what it means to be a human in a nine-centered form, because this is a nine-centered system. So in this nine-centered system, we have auras. I, I just kind of went over in this last slide. We have four different auras that communicate to each other. They do not need words. So in this experience with each other, we're going to practice our strategy and authority. The auras talk without words, so we're going to wait for the energy to move us into aligned interaction. Because learning human design is absolutely not the same as living it. The experience of being your own authority takes practice, it takes discipline, it takes commitment, it takes courage, and it takes a little bit of knowledge to help guide you to that place for now you can experiment with it in your life, with your family, your friends, your coworkers, your life experience of going out and being in the world. This body graph that we're looking at, I love these slides, thanks to Human Design Canada for them, um, that show us the multidimensional, the not the flat piece of paper, but the multidimensional body graph that you that we're, we're attempting to communicate to you what this is, but only you will really know what this is inside of your body as you live this life experience, that multidimensional aspect of you that you already are can be unlocked. The genetic potential can be unlocked just with the simple keys of type, knowing your type, which leads to your strategy for decision-making, which leads to how do I access my authority? You are multidimensional, just like this body graph is. So we're gonna dive into the multidimensionalness of this body graph. Here's some more quotes from Ra, the nature of being. Human design, this human design system is a reading of your genetic code, the imprints that are there in your genetic code. So now with the human design education, your genetic code can be read in detail. This is the work of a professional analyst. This ability to be able to detail out our mechanics obviously is profound. It is so profound. It's the most rewarding work I have ever done in my entire life. And as a third line profile, I've done a lot of different kinds of jobs. So back to raw, it reveals the complete nature in its subtleties. However, by simply grasping the surface surface mechanic, which is what we're doing in Living Your Design, what this work aspires to communicate to you is that you will now have a grounding in this life that is immediately going to bring a difference to your process. If nothing else, when you come to the human design experiment and you experiment with your type strategy and authority and you take a look at what is there, it improves your life experience. This is not about improving you. This is about the releasing or the relinquishing of all the shadow states, the mindsets, the false and negative belief systems that are holding you back from your true potential. And so in this course, we're not going to go into the 12 profiles in depth. That's for rave cartography. But what we do, what we will do is speak specifically to whoever's profiles are in the class, in the course in my interactions with you, in my recognition of you. I will continually fine tune and hone you in to recognize your true self. And that 12 profiles, uh, one of those profiles, whichever one yours happens to be, is a huge part of that. It's 70% of the imprinting that makes you you is your public role, as we call it in BG5 language, your profile. So these are the 12 basic profiles. Now, in this course, we will talk about the four types. And here is the strategy theme and the question that we're going to align you to to help you access your own personal uh, spirit, the abundance of spirit that is within you always innately that is here to have its impact on, on others, manifester, to have its knowing of itself, generator, to have manifesting generator, same thing. Who am I? To know thyself is your primary operative in this life. For projector, it's about knowing other people. So who is that other to have the success in that? That is our spirit potential, our, our true unique um, embodiment of what we're here to do in this life, to be advisors. And the reflector, who are 
you in this moment now? Who am I today as far as this experience of you throughout the lunar cycle? And then who are they as in seeing the forest, not the trees? Who is the outside? How is the outside world, the people in them, comparatively to that transit? Because the transit, the life activations that are changing, ever presently changing, every moment of every day, those reflectors are there to really discern difference, who's different. They're barometers for the health of the community and they reflect the transits in the, experience, in the life experience. Very, very different lunar beings, different types of creatures that we have. So this life experience, when you're learning human design, it's not about trying to find out what's my base and what's my color and what's my tone. You might have heard that if you've come to human design and you've started to hear people talking about how am I supposed to eat and where am I supposed to live and how am I supposed to see and how, what motivates me to action. Those are deep areas of the body graph that you do not have to go to right now if you have not learned to live this yet. You need to learn to live the magic that is on the surface. The surface of the body graph shows us your genetic potential and those keys is what is going to unlock if it is correct for you to dive into the deeper layers of human design. So that is the primary health system. We call it PHS for short. That's how you eat and the environment that you live in or how you're nourished from the outside world. And the eating part, the determination, it is not just about how you put food into your body, but it's also how you take in other people and the interpretation of how life experience moves through you. So it's not just about the eating. And then on the other side, we have something called rave psychology. So just real quick here, eating and environment come from these activations. The motivation and the perspective or how you're here to see and be motivated to action comes from rave psychology. That's the, the information below the surface on the right hand side. That's not what we're going to cover in this living your design because the true magic is on the surface. You have to experiment with that first in order to recognize whether or not this is right for you. All learning, this is raw. Real learning takes seven years. It takes seven years to change approximately all the cells in the body for that seven year renewal. We live in a seven year cycle. The moment that you begin to come into your own nature, the moment that you allow your body to live its life without resistance, you begin that deep process of conditioning. Seven years later, you emerge quite literally as a new being yourself. Your True self is already there, just waiting to be activated by you. So the experimentation helps you know yourself from the ground up. It helps you remove the conditioning. Real easy example here. As an example, let's imagine that you're a reflector or a projector. Okay, reflector or a projector, non-energy types, not designed to initiate or to reach out first. We're really designed for specific either recognition invitation as a projector or for the reflector to be initiated by life. So now let's imagine you're working at a grocery store. I'm using an actual example from a fellow living your design guide who is a reflector. You're working at a grocery store and you feel all this pressure. You have an undefined throat. You have an undefined root center. You feel all this pressure to initiate conversation with other people to greet them because it's polite. It's the polite thing to do, to say hi, to communicate, to socialize because everybody, if you're not doing that, then, oh, you're stuck up. Hi, that was me as a child growing up in high school, um, being accused of being stuck up, hearing what other people said about me because I didn't speak much. I didn't initiate conversation. I was more quiet and I would keep to myself. I'm kind of a loner. So, from the ground up, if you stop that conditioned, homogenized mindset of what a nice person or a good person should do, and you just wait. Now, as an un, non-energy type, as a, as a person who's more about the awareness projector or reflector, 
Now, different opportunities come into your life because now you're not the one initiating from mind, making yourself do something because you think it'll get you something, because it'll say something about you, prove something about you, yada, yada, yada. All the different reasons why one would think that you have to say or do something and be moved to action by that internal mind's thought process rather than the natural essence of what life has to offer to you, to bring to you the clarity of purpose to arise from within you so that you can interact correctly in this life. So knowing yourself from the ground up is a really important key to experimenting with living your design. So life is a duality. Here with Ra, he says, in my professional work, I have be given between five and 6,000 individual readings, design analyses, what, wherever that has been. And regardless of culture or country, there is one prevailing disease. It's called self-hatred. Self-hatred varies in intensity from being just below the surface of the consciousness to be full-blown bitterness, resentment, anger, frustration, all self like uh, attributed to the health of the, the body and it detriments the body when you're always putting that in on oneself and hating the body mentally, right? Because it's the mind's thought processes. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, this is so bad. Oh, I'm such a bad person. Oh, why don't I have that success that the other person has? So it is here back to raw. It is one of the most human of ironies that self-hatred is truly misplaced because these people who hate themselves do not know themselves. They're hating the wrong person, disappointed and dissatisfied with the wrong person. So if you look at your body graph right now, everything that you see with the undefined functions you have been trying to trust as consistent and you've been misidentifying as yourself and the thing inside of your head that you're thinking all the time. You've been misidentifying with that tendency to be powerless or a control freak, whatever that, however that happens to show up for you. This tendency to believe the thoughts inside of your head about yourself and to think that that is who you are, that's insanity because it's not you. And yet, do you remember as a child growing up, I do, people saying, well, you have to think about this. You have to measure the pros and cons in order to make a decision. Well, you have to do it now because otherwise you might miss out on an opportunity. And so inside the head, the voice is saying, I have to do it now. I have to do it all by myself. If I don't prove my value, I'm not going to be able to survive. And I have to make sure that they know that I know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to pretend that I'm really certain. Even if you don't pretend that you're really certain, you're inside your head, you're convinced that you're really certain. Or you're really looking to answer everybody's questions without them asking, boy, are you lost in the not self world? Because that's not you. It's not who you are. And what we can find in the human design body graph is the true you. So it doesn't matter what your design is. What matters is how you live it. The moment, Ross says, that you live out your own nature and you enter into life correctly, this is the moment that you get what is correct for you, the correct career, the correct relationships. It does not matter whether you are a success or not, a homogenized, put them up on a pedestal version of success. There will be no suffering despite your state. Despite your state, no suffering, because you will be living out your nature and it will be clear to you that what is there for you is right for you, whatever it might be. There will be no part of you that says, I wish I could be this or that. I wish I could be like them because look at their life. It's so amazing. I want that. You know, I idolizing other people's lives when you have no idea what it's like to be them. Here, in this body graph, you have access to everything you need in this life. Everything, everything, everything is inside of you already, just waiting to be woken up. 
So the first step to wake up is to master your own mechanics. This does not require that you look outside yourself. All it requires is you taking time, strategy, and authority and experimenting in your own life. And then you get to see what it's like for you to be this body and this form in this life experience, this tangible reality that we see instead of living the life inside the head, which is illusion. The human design system opens the door for the potential of self-love. Finding self-love is also to find a greater love, a love for life and a love for others through understanding, acceptance, and appreciation, and validation for what is there, not for what you desire or want to be there, or what you wish would be different. Throughout living your design, in seeing yourself, and coming to recognize your type and your profile, and coming to understand how you can live out your own nature, pay attention to the importance of that in your relationship with others. One of the biggest things that this experiment has improved in my life is my relationships with other people. It is so profound, the shift that happens, not only within your own body and your experiment, your experience of loving yourself with, through this experiment, but your relation to the other, your relational context with the others in your life, particularly as a projector, for whom which the other is everything. Here in this, back to Ra, he says, so many of our difficulties in this life are because we have great difficulties in our relationships, whether they are our career relationships, or whether they are our personal relationships, or whether they are all our relationships. Hi, that was me. What is true for the individual, a lack of understanding about their own nature, is true for relationships. Relationships operate out of genetic imperatives and they have their own rules. When you're in interaction with another person, you become something different in that auric interaction. Remember auras talk to each other? Auras are flexible, they breathe, they move. Auras are porous generator. Auras are penetrating projector. Auras are like Teflon reflector. Auras are resistant, mm. auras are dense, auras have their own shell, auras are impactful manifester. So in this process, each of us has a unique path. And if you're going to continue on this journey with me, with us, the, those of us that I showed you at the beginning of this presentation that are continuing on this journey, I want to invite you to commit to your own process because that is what is going to truly make a difference for you. So basically, your own process is what is your type? Do you have, there it is, closed and repelling aura, the manifester? Do you have a generative energy that is open and enveloping, drawing in as opposed to the manifester pushing out? Do you have a focused and an absorbing energy projector? Do you have a resistance and sampling energy reflector? Each of these are nine centered beings or nine centered types because the advent of type here with the projector in 1781, coincidental to the discovery by Sir William Herschel of the planet Uranus when we became a nine-centered being as these bodies, as these forms, and mutated out of the seven-centered, if you know your Hindu Brahmin chakra system, that's seven main centers. Now we are nine-centered, and now we have these auric frequencies that are interdependent with one another, not about hierarchies of domination and submission and telling others what to do, you should do this, you should do this, you must, you have to, you have to, whatever, outside authority. Now it's about our own process of interacting correctly with each other. And there are some experiments that you can play with in order to learn what this is like for you. So that's my inv invitation for you to commit to from this moment on as a manifester. Whoever is going to be impacted by your decision-making process, keep them informed. For the generator, 
from this moment on, rather than initiating and trying to make something happen, wait for life to move you. Wait for your body to respond to the physical reality that is around you, for the asking from other or from life, from your body's response to do something. For the projector, from this moment on, do not initiate with manifestors or generators. And in that interaction with the manifestor or generator, do not offer, do not advise unless they specifically ask you for your insight, opinion, idea, whatever it is that happens to be that they're asking of you, wait for that because they're not ready for your guidance unless they're specifically asking for it. It's wasted energy. For the reflector to wait a full lunar cycle of 28 and a half days before making these decisions that life has initiated from you. So you can see that there is all kinds of waiting here. Waiting is the most important piece of a nine centered beings process. The wait in the waiting, and this is not sitting here doing nothing, just waiting. It's not that. <laughs> it is being you. Whatever it is that moves you, that is alive inside of you, that sings your soul song. Maybe you feel like putting on music and dancing. Maybe you feel like this, it's a sunny, shiny day and you want to go outside for a walk. But if it involves another person, attempt to follow your strategy. That's your process. That's committing to your own process. That's my invitation to you. Should you continue this journey, whether on your own or with us in a group. So there's a slide here that I'm going to read that is paraphrased from some of the work of Jenna Oblivion. He is a manifester at the Human Design America College. He is the director of Human Design America. And the nine centered beings process is so profound. So you know you're waking up from the thrall of conditioning when you can see how your thoughts are programmed and how they try to manipulate you or other people. You are deconditioning when you do not act on or believes the mind's storyline, which always leads to suffering. Only the not self suffers. If as a nine centered being, we learn how to take our time according to our design to honor our own process and speaks our own truth without needing justification of our own decision making. Because we do not owe it to anybody else, not your mom, not your dad, not your dog, not your husband, not your wife, not your kids, not your boss, not anybody. Nobody has power over you. You are here to be your own authority. So in being your own authority, it means that you trust this body that has an ability to move you through life without resistance. What causes the resistance is the belief of the story inside the head about the self. So a true nine centered awakened being does not try to interpret the motives or reality of another person. Let me say that again. You know that gossiping, backstabbing type of thing that you see other people, well, they probably this and that, whatever, <laughs> does not try to interpret the motives or reality of another. It's impossible to know what it's truly like inside of somebody else's body, inside of somebody else's life. We, as nine centered beings, if we need to, in correct interaction, can ask of the other, what's your take on that? We can allow unique perspectives because truth is not owned by any one individual. Every single person has their own innate and unique perspective and truth within their own body. And so the not self will second guess and degrade its value in being. The true self does not do that. The true self knows it has its own self worth and validation comes from within. It doesn't come from outside of oneself. The nine centered being respects other people's boundaries without making demands and accusations and taking advantage or exploiting the other person. 
has a clear sense of boundaries. The nine-centered being asks about others' experiences, has an open mind to see that others' perspectives and perceptions are vastly different, absolutely, utterly unique, and yet everybody is conditioned to see the same way through our media, through our governments, through our memes, to find certain thing funny and another thing not funny or sad and another thing not sad. Each one of us, if you take a look at Rahu and Ketu, remember the science of light earlier in our presentation? Rahu and Ketu are the nodes of the moon and the nodes of the moon allow us to perceive uniquely our life, the perspective of this road that we're traveling in this life and the people that we can serve and support how we serve and support those people is through correct interaction with each other in alignment with our strategy and authority. We get what we need and it's all okay on this path of self-sufficiently, of sufficiency for me, on this path of rubbing hands, <laughs> rubbing hands, rubbing shoulders, shaking hands with the devil is what I'm moving to in a couple of years or this path of nurturing and growth or this path of tranquility and change, constant change. That's the perspective. I'm here to see the Buddhas. I'm here to see the role models. I'm here to serve people who are wanting or desiring or on a path of being trusted leaders because that's what a six line is. Marianne Winnegar is a six two. Literally, these are people I can fulfill my purpose with if correctly recognized and invited and I'm emotionally clear. So to be able to see that the way that we see and where we be, we, it's like we're literally living on different planets. Even though we're all in this same illusion of Maya together, we are living in different worlds. So now is the world that you're living in the not self mind, the conditioning of undefined functions that are dominating you as a life form, or is the world that you're living in the embodiment of your true inherent gifts and your unique potential that can bring you along an imaginative journey, perhaps if it's your design, or in an actual experience, 36, 35, if that's your design. What is it within you that can be trusted and trustworthy? That is what we're here to find out as nine-centered beings. So as a nine-centered being, there's a few more things I want to cover with you. The nine-centered being is drawn to those of like vibration to support each other's evolution and growth. I might not be the teacher for you. If you're still listening to me, there is something there because you're interested, my way of speaking, what value you're getting from the conversation or the dialogue, the, what is that called when you're just lecture? I guess this is a lecture. My inspiration, my inspirational construct or whatever it is that comes out when I feel really inspired to share something. If that is moving to you emotionally, if you recognize something that is there for you to explore, that is something of like vibration. Because when you're taking people in orically, hearing them, it has the potential to mutate you. If you take that in, you grok it. Grok is a word, um, Robert Heinlein, Stranger in a Strange Land. It's a grok is a word that has been popularized, but if you haven't read the book, grok is basically, it's like you're taking in information so deeply, or a person, it's like you're eating them. That's what projectors do. They grok things, people, particularly one person at a time in aura. But when we're hearing each other talk and we're listening, we're on the same wavelength and the same frequency because we're literally talking. We're having a communion. Communion is what we're looking for as nine center beings. It supports each other's growth because we are interdependent. We're here to be independent in our own authority, unless we're a mental projector and we literally need other people to bounce ideas off of. We have our own personal process of authority, all of us. So surrendering to your process 
means that this might not be for you. The fulfillment of your life's purpose is what the human design system helps you to find. Fulfillment of your life's purpose. And it's not about finding it. It's just about allowing it to let it happen. Human design, Ross says, isn't for everyone. It's really not. It's not easy. It'll never be for everyone. It's only for those who are ready. Are you ready? It's only for those that readiness is a serendipity. It's just a matter of timing. One of the people that is continuing in this journey with me, I gave him a practice reading. I think I was 2015, early 2015. So I was still just in the beginning of my analyst training. And I kept inviting him over and over into living your design. And finally, he's been living it, but finally he's like, you know, I think I'm ready to be an analyst. So that comes in time or not. That serendipity, that gate of luck, 46, it's not a choice for you. But this readiness to experiment with human design is a door opening slightly, as Ross says. It's that moment of the possibility of being able to truly go a different path. This is not homogenized stuff here. This is very, very different. It's time for us to go a different way. It's time for us to go a unique way, the way of ourselves, what we are as beings, as nine-centered beings. It's very, very different. You are the only one. Who can do this work. This is not some book you pick up, read that and go, oh, that's nice. <laughs> and then go on your merry way. You actually have to put this into practice. And so that's one of the things that we're going to do in this. If you decide to know thyself, your emotional wisdom, your anger or your peace as a manifester, your self-empowerment as a generator, your knowing of awakening yourself, your survival instincts, perhaps that's your design, your mutation, your power of individuation, the tenacity, the strength that is there to struggle for something, a life that is meaningful, a life that has purpose. You are the only one that can do this work. To empower your authority doesn't mean you have to know all 64 gates. It means then that you need to have an experience of awakening. And awakening happens differently for every single person. Every single person has their own process of awakening, their own process of empowering their own authority. It's unique to you. For me, I have developed this into a course that takes us 10 weeks total. The reason I do that is because I wanted to add an extra piece for those who are emotionally defined because it takes longer and to really dive into understanding the solar plexus for both for those who are defined and those who are undefined who are amplifying those emotions i found it valuable and helpful for me in my work with other people and then there's another way if you would like to continue the journey let's say you're not emotional so emotional here <laughs> and you don't mind going on for about 10 weeks total from this week on if you're not emotional, I would like to invite you to a Living Your Design Awakening Intensive. That's going to be two one-day-at-a-time sessions, weekend, so that it's not back-to-back -back days, but two different weekends. But the first day, we're going to break down the not-self. The second day, we'll build you back up with your um, authority, with your design. I want to thank you for being here. And in the meantime, whether you begin this journey committed it now or in the future or never at all, I hope that you can remember to follow your bliss, to follow your type, honoring your strategy, to honor your unique personal authority, and whether you can do that or not, to love yourself unconditionally. Namaste.